Today on Worth a Dram, the boys crack open a bottle of Rye 3 whiskey from the Bourbon Thieves. <laughs> what is that voice? <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like doing like a... Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Where the Dram. I'm <laughs> I didn't think you were going to do it back. <laughs> oh. What's up, Grim? All right, so he's red, I'm Grim. <laughs> this is your home for whiskey reviews, sly opinions, and jokes that we've borrowed without asking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, so, specifically, I mean, we don't steal jokes. Well, we no. try not to. We try to, we try we to try reference. To, we try to credit, at least. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should have we should have a list of uh, accredited sources. I know we I've stolen a couple of Dimitri Martin jokes. That's true. Yeah, you have. This bottle that we're looking at today was only accessible to us because we joined up with the Bourbon Thieves on Instagram. Yes. So if you have not, if you're on Instagram and you have not already checked out the Bourbon Thieves, yep. Check them out. Yep. So I, you can look up uh, look up their handle at uh, Bourbon Thieves, or I think uh, R.I. Bourbon Enthusiasts is another founder. Uh, no, it's been, it's been a great community to be a part of. Um, you know, we, we're we really, really enjoying being part of that community. Yeah. Um, um, just, the, you know, the sharing experiences and yeah, uh, or sharing finds or, you know, yeah. it's always nice to have a group of folks who are like, they are, can appreciate, like, you know, I can tell my wife, oh, I got this bottle of Blanton's and she'll be like, there's a horse on top. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, like, you know, when you run into, when you meet up with people locally, like, you get to share samples. Yeah. Safely. Safely. You know, stay six feet apart. Um, check out my Etsy store for the uh, slingshot. Sling? <laughs> yeah, the slingshot. Shot. I like it. What are you pointing at here? I was going to say the Bourbon Thieves logo does wear a mask. So. That's true. The Bourbon Thieves are wearing masks in their logo. <laughs> uh, so. Rye 3. Or rye, rye three whiskey. I like the sound of rye three. I, I I'm ninety nine percent sure that's what it is. Which you pointed out off camera just before we started. Why it's called rye three? Yes. <laughs> Which I didn't. I didn't put together on my own. It's a blend of three different ryes. Yeah. So there's a um, ninety five five. So ninety five percent rye, five percent malt barley. barley yep. uh, three year age statement. There is a hundred percent Alberta Canadian rye, and then there is a fourteen year age light whiskey. Yeah. A hefty uh, amount of a that. hefty amount of that yeah. fourteen age light whiskey, uh, all blended together in a proprietary blend uh, in this bottle. Mm -hmm. um, this one is bottled cast strength. I believe it's one hundred and nineteen point four. Sounds right. Yeah, one hundred nineteen point four proof. Good call. Bottled by Phenomenal Spirits mm -hmm. and distributed by Curiata. Curiata, Curiata, yeah. Curiata, Curiata. I think it's yep. Curiata. Uh, so they're definitely they're a hundred percent worth checking out because they specialize in small batch. Not well known distilleries like yeah. their whole purpose is to get smaller distilleries names out on the market. Yeah, for and that exposure that they normally wouldn't. Smaller get. distilleries that are putting out a good, consistent product. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, um, I should, that that's a, a I, good specification because <laughs> <laughs> that's like like headline on their website. Phenomenal Spirits was founded in 2017 by uh, Cardick Suhir. Yep, with um, master blender Matt Witzig. 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 I was saying it, and I was like, that's not right. And then I looked at it, and I'm like, no, that is right. <laughs> so it's, I, I apologize, Matt. I do want to take just uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, I don't need to take a whole lot of time. We did have an opportunity to join both Cardick and Matt yes. in a Zoom meeting with the other Bourbon Thieves. Yeah. A handful of members and a couple of the founders. Yeah, which um, was super cool. We didn't really contribute much, but it was very, very cool to be a part of We were of flies on the wall. Yeah. And it was actually, no, Cardick did actually uh, recognize your work on the Instagram with the beautiful picture of Rye 3 that you put up. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, in that Zoom session we had, Zoom meeting we had, um, you can see the, the passion and the, you know, the hard work and everything that's, that's gone into putting out this, yeah. um, this bottle in particular, but also uh, founding that Phenomenal Spirits distillery um, going into making. And they started actually making rum. So Ron Zalco mm -hmm. 10-year was their first rum that they came out with. Um, 
that's probably one of your notes that I've gone into started talking about. No, it's still yours. Okay, good. <laughs> first release there. <laughs> <laughs> but that was first released in 2018. I'm going to take a uh, page out of your book and actually steal one of your notes because that run is <laughs> run is Alco Rum actually won the coveted gold at uh, the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Yeah. I, I, you know what? We have heard so much about the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. We should just go one year. We just really to should, see if yeah. we can get in just to be like, hey, no, yeah, we're worth the rim, you know, we're... Uh... <laughs> You know, if we have a clip for it in a vest, we could get anywhere. I think, you know, if we... do I, ha I do have one on me. If we pass out enough of these at the door, they might be like, all right, are you worth a gram? I've seen your stuff. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so aside from uh, gold at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, they also took home double gold. Jeez. <sighs> double, double gold, gold. <laughs> from the International Wine and Spirits Competition. Yeah. Um, so for, for that 10-year rum. Yeah, for the 10-year rum. Yeah. Um, the standard expression of rye three is actually finished in those rum casks, mm -hmm. and I think that is. I think I'm stealing your notes. And I think that one's actually at 100 proof. And that's at 100 proof. Yeah. Um, this one in particular is not finished in the rum cask. Nope. Uh, but it is the same mash bill as the standard rye three. So I think. Wait. Uh, yeah. Let's. I'd say let's just get the pour in here. Let's do it. We're looking for whiskey today, aren't we? Oh gosh. Am I pouring that? I am. Pouring. Yeah. Oh, that was good. That was a nice one. That was. Do you want me to do it again? Please. Slow mo replay. You went too slow. And I did go too slow. Really, really sad. Thank you. That was good. Good that time. You've redeemed yourself. I'm glad. <laughs> um, I do like the nice. I, I find myself drawn to like the wine bottle shape whiskey. Yeah. Because simplicity. Yeah. There's so many different bottles out there. Like Booker's is another one that I that I get drawn to. Yeah. Um, just from the bottle shape, I don't know why. I just I, mean, I never talked about the bottle shape. I don't know why. I'm not... No, aesthetically, I, I mean, I like the really clean label. It's a really pleasing green that they've chosen, and the gold the gold leaf finish on the label. Um, but no, you're not wrong. Like this, the bottle style is just it's simple. It's simplicity yeah. and it's and very you know clean. what, gold and green is very close to Packers colors. So. Uh, I can't drink this. Go pack go. You, you, in the beginning, you put too much Packer stuff on our Instagram. <laughs> I have not posted anything Packers. I know, but the thing since... is, like, but I get a lot of Packers comments. And like, You're gonna have to talk to Red because he's he's the one. He's the, he's the uh, misinformed. <laughs> misinformed. Um, so we did mention that a hefty portion of this mash bill is a 14 year age light whiskey. Yes. So light whiskey is something that we haven't touched on on this channel yet, and it's actually I don't know about you. But it's a new term to me. It was to me too. So they were talking about it on the Zoom session, and yeah. I had to go Google. I did the same. What is light whiskey? Because <laughs> uh, it was the first time I had heard that. Yeah. So uh, back in the 1960s, American drinkers were starting to gravitate towards uh, lighter um, liquors like gin, vodka. Usually, uh, more, more often than not, imported spirits. Mm. It's been a while since it we has got been. that close. So. Uh, so. A lot of American distillers were starting to suffer because Americans just weren't drinking the traditional bourbons and rye that yeah that they used to. America's spirit. Yeah, the Americanist of whiskeys. <laughs> uh, so in 1968, the federal government actually introduced or created this new classification of a whiskey, which is a light whiskey. Yeah. Um, a light whiskey is typically distilled between 160 and 190 proof. Yep, relatively high. That's high. Um, but it's also aged in either used or new uncharred oak barrels. Oh, okay. So it, is, it should come out a lighter color then? Yep. If it's not getting that fresh. Lighter color, lighter flavor, and that should actually, like, uh, that, that, a light whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> There's really not much more to drag on about yeah. that. Yeah. I was, um, I was, I'm not going to lie, I first heard the term light whiskey, and I was like, is that like diet whiskey? Like... <laughs> there are less calories in it, gotta, so that's called light. <laughs> I gotta tell you, uh, I just accidentally took a snifferizer here, and it's... That's all right, I sniffed already. So. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, man, it's killer. Man, that's nice. For being almost 120 proof, man, it's not... No. None of that punch is there. It's no. just all... It's very fragrant. But it's also, like, it's, it's light. Like, it's... What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say delicate, because it's still, it's still a... It's still a... High-proof whiskey. So I get, I, I guess I'm interpreting the proof as that like intensity of, of sense coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no, getting I, a, a real good like orange zest right on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Like a fruity citrus almost. Yep. Um, 
it's almost leading to like a, a like a really well ripened grapefruit smell. Oh, nice! And I like the hand movements. Man, you got the you got the best hand movements. I'm picturing the grapefruits that like Brian and I used to take target practice shooting. <laughs> 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 We'd go out in the, the desert. The ones from the backyard? That, yeah. In the, the, the huge ass tree. My old house. We had three yeah. trees. We had a uh, tangelo, orange, and a grapefruit. And neither of us liked grapefruit, so we used to just take them <laughs> off. I'd bring them to work and give them to people that liked them. Yeah. But then the ones that I picked and nobody wanted, I brought out to the desert and we just shot them with 45s. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's... I'm getting a... Uh, like you said, kind of that, that citrus... T- it, to me, it's like that... That that bite of citrus, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then underneath that, my mouth is watering. <laughs> like, I don't think that's happened. No. Yet on this uh, like. So underneath that citrus um, zest, I get you know kind of that classic sweetness. Yeah. Um, so there's a almost caramelly vanilla type, not vanilla specifically, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. Like so I'm not I'm not getting a whole lot of caramel. Um, there's a there's a. A zestiness to it, though, and not the orange that I picked up before. It was like a zing. It was like a... Yeah, like a... Not quite a mint. Yeah. Not quite a sage. But some kind of, like, an herby yeah. zestiness. I'm ready. I. No. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm lost in my nose here. Uh, thank you, Bourbon Thieves, for including us, because we wouldn't have, a, have, had, have had access to this one Uh Without you guys, yeah, you know it's been a, it's been a pleasure being a part of that community. And this first glass is for you. Thank you. Cheers, Flanja. Mm. I got that tingle in my nose. It's immediately warming, but it's not. Like it's not. Fire. It's not hitting like 120 proof. Yeah. At all. Yeah. At if you would give if you had given me that blind, I would guess 90 to 100. Yeah, it doesn't hit like 120 proof, but also doesn't hit like that high of a rye. You know what I mean? I'm getting it. Actually, ooh, you know what I just got? So in the finish, do you remember those those honey sticks? Yeah, like the cinnamon honey sticks, or like the uh, the wildflower honeysuckle, like all the different flavors you can get. Those. So honey, basically. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, but what I meant was, you know how you get that rye punch, that real spiciness. Thing? Yeah. That, that tingly spice right yeah, up front. Yeah, that isn't that sort of ryeness. When I say this doesn't hit like, no, I got you. What yeah. I would expect from a high rye is that typically when I drink when I've had rye whiskey, it's that that's what I get and then that's overwhelming everything else. It's yeah. like, hey, here's some spice and then here's some more spice and then here's, let's add some water and there's more spice somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but this is... This is more mellow. than the Pendleton. Yes. Because the Pendleton had almost no rye yes. kick whatsoever. Um, but this is, yeah, you're right. It's, it's mellower in that rye spiciness yeah. than other things that which is had. crazy to me at 120 proof that i would feel like it was mellow granted this being our first experience with a light whiskey i, I have to guess i have to speculate that that's actually what what we're noticing yeah. on the palate here <laughs> man i got yeah in thing. the finish there there's almost a, a pepperiness in the finish you know like we say you, you bite a uh, pepper kernel or like you're eating whole you know not eating a whole peppercorn but yeah like, and you get like a pepper corn stuck in your mouth. Yeah, there is a little pepperiness there. On the finish. Yep. As you're kind of breathing. Pepper and honey. That's that's yeah. that's in the finish. Um, you know what this is? It's phenomenal. Ooh. <laughs> it is spirited as well. <laughs> um, Take me on your mouth journey. It wasn't going to be a mouth journey. It was actually just going to it was just going to be like Oh, yeah, it, it sounded like you were setting up for like, all right. No, I did actually. So second You're sitting toast. Sitting under a tree, there's a guy playing hacky sack. Yeah, no. Second toast is for I'd say for phenomenal because like. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, one for you know providing this for the bourbon thieves, two for introducing such just a, a well-rounded spirit here. Yeah, I'm enjoying every second of this. Uh, I am as well, uh, and it makes me I makes me want to go buy the the rum finish cask as well just to see how it. Yeah, I do. I really want to try how it that. compares. So yes. I thought I was going to say something. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, but I almost get um, that, that citrus zing. So I'll go on the mouth journey. Go for it. Hits my mouth. There's that kind of like citrus zing, orange zest, whatever uh, that was on the nose. And then um, coming through there, there's a sweetness, but it's not, it's not caramel, vanilla, you know, like bourbon sweetness. It's like a earthy sweetness. Does that make sense? Like a fresh sweetness. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So honestly, like I, now that I've noticed the honey in the finish, that's actually, it starts earlier than the finish for me. So like yeah. that's, for me, for my palate, that's right at the top. And maybe that's what I'm interpreting as that kind of fresh sweetness coming through in like the mid palate. Maybe. You are awfully close for I a am. weird cut. I am. Sorry. <laughs> it's once, I just, you know. Yeah. It's been a couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Again, probably a longer time period for you than it has been for me. <laughs> no, I, all right. So I feel sometimes I kind of co I, I come off as just. Oh, I'm sniffing already. I'm sorry. I'm very right. excited to get in the second glass. Yeah, no. I, uh, all right. Real talk. Sometimes I come across I come across as mean when I'm like get away from me. <laughs> but at the same time. I just miss being near people. All right, this is this is taking a weird tangent now, but the thing I miss the most is movie theaters. Right. Yeah, I'll my give you wife that. said it the other day. I miss going to movie theaters, and I was like, mother, I miss going. Big bag of popcorn, big thing of candy, big soda. Yeah, popcorn. I'm, I'm spending like a hundred bucks, but popcorn and a cherry coke for me. Yeah, movie theater cherry coke is just it's you the know, best cherry coke. Speaking of coke, I found out recently that do you you agree? Movie theater cherry coke is the yeah. best cherry coke. I found out recently that McDonald's has their own blend of Coca Cola, specifically for how much ice they put in the, in the, cup. Cup. Sorry, that's a word. Cup. So yes, it's like scientifically it's like so that that way the ice will melt at a certain amount by the time you take your first sip, and then that's like the perfect ratio for Coke. Fun fact. So, fun fact. It's probably going to be on the promo. And not in the episode, but... No, I'm keeping that in there. You're keeping that in there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Fun fact, McDonald's has their own recipe for Coca-Cola. Yeah. All right, so, all right, back to Rye 3. That I'm already smelling, like... Yeah. Immediately. So, all right, we we questioned whether it was Rye or Rye 3. Yes. When, or earlier in the first half of this episode, in the Zoom meeting that we had with Kardik... I heard people call it Rye, and I heard people call it Rye 3. I never once heard... Kartik or Matt reference it as rye or rye three. No, they just spoke about rye whiskey yep. in particular. So, hey, if either of you guys are watching, please settle that debate for us. <laughs> Tell me if I'm right. I think the answer is going to be as long as you buy it, I don't care how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, so back to our whiskey here. Back to the whiskey. So we both snuck sniffs here. Sniffs. Uh, so... It, it wasn't a lot of alcohol bite on the nose on the first class. No. Nope. After sitting for 10 minutes, 15 minutes here, there's, it's... A little bit higher, I think. Well, I swirl it a little bit. Give, give it a good... Because I think it sits in the glass once it sits. Still, that doesn't change. That doesn't, doesn't change. change so you a little bit higher? A little bit. Our noses are so different. That's why we're both doing this. That's true. Otherwise, we'd be two different channels competing. That's right. But we would do a lot of, like, get-togethers, like... Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, all those same flavors. So that yeah, something that we've noticed with all of the high proof whiskeys that we've tried is that they just really, really hold their own in the glass as yeah. they rest. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of dissipation of those flavors. So there's yeah. still that um, citrus. There's still that sweetness. There's still that honey. There's still that um, a little bit of background of baking spice on the nose, but not not. Anything overpowering, like I said in the first half of the episode, not nearly as much as I was expecting. Yeah, I'm ready if you were. Man, and there's there's a there's a there's a, there's a depth to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So yes. And maybe it's because the last episode we well I guess it's two episodes we got now was Evan Williams, and that was like, not that I'm comparing this to Evan Williams. What I'm saying is, comparatively speaking, though, Evan Williams is a sheet of paper, and this is a full novel. Yes. Yeah. It's the best way to put it. You know what that was? <laughs> that was good. That was on the fly. <laughs> you know what? Case closed. Let's drink.
yeah, there's that initial honey citrus sweetness that kind of just hits and it just rides to the whole palate. And now, as I'm talking, that kind of rye, traditional rye flavors are kind of picking yeah. up. That, that little bit of pepperness, but that honey and that yeah. sweetness is still It's a killer riding. whiskey. Absolutely killer. I don't... You know, I started with saying like like uh started by saying, you know, delicate and fragrant killer is just yes. <laughs> I think if I had to on a scale of one to ten, like killer I think is my top. Yeah. Or close top. to I I might not have discovered my top yet. Yeah. But this is close. This is up there. Yeah, it's up there. Yeah. Granted I would have to agree. Granted, I've thoroughly enjoyed all of the high proof whiskeys that we <laughs> I mean, I I don't want to say that I am becoming a proof snob. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, if it's less than 100 proof these days, I'm like, meh. And I feel bad about that. We've also, I mean, all right, so we've been doing this for seven months now. Yes. Fairly regularly. Fairly regularly. <laughs> Fairly regularly. Yeah. So the, the standard proof stuff, so like 80 to 90 to 100, up to 100, we're like, yeah. I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, let's drink that. As soon as it... 101, which we have a Maker's 101. Yes. Once it gets over 100, we're like, yeah, give me some more. <laughs> give me some of that high proof. Yep. Um, Hit me, no. baby, one more time. And I, I don't think I'm becoming a proof snob, but... Um, I Well, I am drawn... I, I find myself drawn more to the higher proof the longer we've been doing this. Yeah. It can have a nice hit, but it's just going to be whatever flavor has got to it. Yeah. The higher proof stuff, man, it just... Dots my eyes. Uh, no, I 100% agree. And this hits, this hits a spot I didn't know I had. Yeah. You know, like, like I didn't know I wanted this until I started drinking it. Yeah. It's like, you know, you use the corners in between rooms to like scratch that spot between your shoulders. Yeah. But then you do it at somebody else's house and they've got like a nub sticking out and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's the spot. Yeah. Whew, the next episode is going to be fun. Yeah, uh, uh, stay tuned next week. We're doing a triple threat. Yeah, uh, triple threat flavored whiskeys. Yep. And um, peach, cherry, blackberry after two glasses of 120 proof. We're going to be feeling good. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Mm. So, we got to get through impressions. Real we, quick. We have to do our job. We do have to do our job. Real quick, I do want to say, coming out in later this year, I wrote down the exact, I wrote down the month. I want to say it was like... Second half of 2021. Second half of 2021. Yeah. Uh, Phenomenal Spirits is releasing a Rye 3 cask strength that is rum finished. Yep. Um, uh, I think the same time period, they're also doing, they're releasing a 15 year rum. Yes. Ron is alcohol 15 year. Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, it was really cool to, to for um, Cardick to talk about where he sees the rum world going and how it's been influenced by bourbon and rye yeah. whiskey drinkers. Um, I guess it was just it, it was it was really it was really kind of humbling and, and uh, cool to be to be part of that. Yeah. I mean, because you know, we are new to this. I mean, yes. great. It's been less than a year. We can't. I mean, it, five years from now, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna still probably mm -hmm. say. We're new to this, you know, don't really take our word for gospel. You know, it was it was just really, really cool to be included in that. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, they generally seem like cool dudes. Like, yeah. And like I said, the, <laughs> the, the, the passion and, the you know, just wanting to put out the best premium spirits that they can. Yeah. Um, really kind of shown through in that in that Zoom meeting. It's, show, it's showing through right it's here. It's showing through right here. <laughs> Very strongly. Yeah. Definitely a fan. So... I preferred, I think, I preferred first or second glass, without water. I, I did. There wasn't a ton of difference. Did you say the first or second? Yes. Okay. I don't. I don't care. First or second pour. Same. Just I'm 100 no percent no same water page. For me. Yeah. No water. Yeah. Same page. I would say Drink so. Drink in front of a fire. Yeah. So uh, check out it's Curiata Curiata. We'll Definitely put the link in the yeah. description, but check them out because you can actually purchase their rum finished, hundred proof. Yes. There that right is, now. The uh, 100 proof rum cask, rum cask finish is about is fifty six dollars on Curiata right now. Mm. Um, this, you know, private label cask strength was 
seventy ish, sixty nine seventy dollars, uh, plus shipping on top yeah. of that. Always. Yeah. Um, if you happen to be in Arizona, Curiata will ship to your door. Very cool. Which uh, I didn't know until <laughs> I didn't I didn't know, and then I got a FedEx shipping notification that this was coming to my house, and I was very excited about that. I was excited when you told me too. Um, but. Adam, I want to say it was Adam from Curiata, actually joined us on that Zoom call with Cardick and Matt and the rest of the Bourbon Thieves. Yeah, um, somebody did. I don't remember the name. Yeah. My kids were screaming downstairs. <laughs> I joined late and I tried to catch the name. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I mean, those are the cool dudes as well, trying to get, you know, good stuff from smaller distilleries out there to yeah. kind of expand the distribution a little bit. That's me. Wow, we got an eye roll and a side behind the camera. All right. Wow. That wasn't my best. How do we ever, how do we settle on this? <laughs> I have no idea. But we've done it for like 50 episodes now, so we have to continue. We don't have 50 episodes out yet. We're getting All right, there. we've done it for like... Since 20, the beginning. 25 reviews. Actually, now. hold on. We've done it since, I think, like episode two, because the first one was just a five <laughs> <laughs> floating over my head. Anyway, hey, if you've liked what you've seen here, please comment down below anything that you'd like to see us try. Uh, if you happen to get your hands on the Rye 3, please hit us up here and uh, tell yeah. us what you think. Uh, we haven't had the rum cask finished. We haven't had the 100 proof yet. So if you have, please let us know how it is. Yeah, that's definitely on the list now, though. Oh, 100%. Everything's on the list. Yeah. But now that is prioritized. Yeah, it's on the I VIP think. list. The VIP list. Yep. The very important, phenomenal spirit list. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway. Oh, it's off the cuff. I'm not even wearing cuffs. So, uh, you know, please like and subscribe here. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and remember, no matter how you like your whiskey, that's the right way.